Well, it goes deep in the fact that Netanyahu has been in power for, what was it, 20 something years at this point? It's um, to me, it's, it's not, not it's not great either. Like, me, you know, at the end yeah, of the day, it's, it's almost like a Putin like situation. If you have yeah. one leader who's just there for decades and decades and decades, you don't get any new ideas that could actually come in and actually try different things. So, like I said, man, it's a complicated situation. I don't think in our lifetime there's going to be a solution. And, and that's sad to me because when you go to Israel and you actually meet with the people, most of the people, I mean, especially before October 7th, they don't want to continuously fight. Like, for example, when you go, I remember in Tel Aviv, this was interesting to me. When you walk into a mall, there's a security person at the door. And you think, okay, they're, they're just checking people for stealing stuff. No, they're actually checking bags for bombs. That is a normal occurrence in a major city mall. There's, you go to America, people are not checking for bombs. But over there, they're really checking for bombs because bombs really do explode in malls. Yep. You know? And and if you the one thing I also learned from being in Israel is that a terrorist group is designed to stop the peace process. That's the whole thing of it all, is that whenever you get a situation where people are close to actually working things out and compromising, a terrorist on whatever side will blow up a school bus. And the first thing people say is, you can't talk to these people. Look what they do. They blow up school buses. They're animals. We can't have conversations with them. And at that point, the peace process stops. And, 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 that's, and that's the problem is that you have to ignore the terrorism and you have to actually work towards compromise. Um, and a group like, like Hamas, unfortunately, can't compromise. Because like I said, they don't actually consider Correct. Israel a country. They consider them occupiers and refuse to actually communicate with them directly. So unfortunately, with Hamas... Is not a solution. But if you actually offer the people in Gaza and the West Bank an alternative to Hamas, where they could actually live a peaceful life, they could actually raise families, grow businesses, there's not blockades, there's free travel and so forth, I think most people would choose to be anti-Hamas. Mm -hmm. But we're not there right now. Yeah, I mean, there has to be another, the solution is there has to be, you know, like you said, hopefully a more moderate group will come in and lead the people towards modern freedoms, you know, yeah. and they have their religion, but not be fucking fanatics that want death to all Jews, you know? Yes. And uh, that's hopefully what will happen once, like, it's going to get worse first, you know? It's like, you got to eliminate the fucking, first, you got to get rid of all the, you know, the, uh, the evil, you know? And then you have to replace it. You can't, you know, and it's going to be a long process, but it right now, the only uh, the only upside that I see is, you know, there's no more uh, like pretending or ignoring. Like this shit is gonna get dealt with. It's getting dealt with right now. It's happening, you know. And it's sad and it's horrible. Innocent people are dying. It's a war, but it's not gonna get better until something happens, you know. And we're we're living in a time right now when that shit is happening. Well, I interviewed Neil deGrasse Tyson. The, uh, the astrophysicist. And we talked about his views of God. And he said that through all of his studies, he has yet to see some level of intelligent force that's involved in the universe. And therefore, he doesn't believe in God. I have a similar point of view. Like I said, I was born Jewish. And when it comes to Judaism, it's a religion as well as a bloodline, right? But me personally, I'm not religious. I don't, I don't believe in God. I don't think I'm going to heaven after I die. I have to make the most of the world when I'm here. You've hopped in and out of religion in various ways, from growing up in a family that was somewhat religious to going hardcore Hasidic Jew to shaving off your beard, not being Hasidic anymore, now considering becoming you know, more Hasidic again you know, in terms of a beard and yarmulke. Do you believe in God? And how sure of you are you in that belief? I believe in God, but I believe it's a belief. Like, I don't believe there's proof of God or it's something that you're supposed to believe in or you should believe in. I believe it's, you know, a personal thing. I believe in God. I feel a connection to it. Um, there was a time where I felt it was the only thing and that uh, I would think about God obsessively throughout the day. I'd compare everything and was on this whole trip. And at some point, I felt that if there is a God, he probably wants us to leave him the fuck alone and give him some space, you know, and stop fucking saying all these things in his name and doing things in his name and doing all these things for, for God. So 
that was kind of the trip that I came to at the end of it all was like God basically being like, uh, all right, dude, like, yeah, God, there's God. Now fucking go live your life and, you know, be a mensch, try to be a good person. Um, and so I know that I'm not the first person to think that, but I, I like God. I like the idea of God. I like, I like toying with it. I like playing with it. I like connecting to it, you know? To me, it's not like anymore something that like God, this, that, or, or something I have to figure out. It's more of like a, I spent a lot of time thinking about it and coming up with different ideas about God. And now I can just be like doing emails, you know, take care of my kids. And then I just like take a joint and walk my dog on the trail. And I start thinking about God and boom, I can, I start going with it. It's fun for me, you know, um, something I enjoy, but it's not like a, a thing of pressure. And I don't know if there's a God, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily, you know, say there is, a, there is, or there isn't, you know, I like to believe in God. I mean, definitely a little bit. It's fun. It's a very dope answer, man. I don't think I've ever got an answer like that. So it's, it's always one or the other. It's always like God definitely exists and right. I, I have absolute proof of it or no, God doesn't exist at all. There's no proof of it. I mean, right. to say, I don't know, maybe I like the idea of it, but I, I, I'm not, I'm not totally sold on it. I, I think it's dope, man. I think that, you know, it's a good way of thinking about it. It has to be. It has to be the only way. I mean, you can't, you can't say there isn't or there is. You, there's no way of knowing. There's no facts of what there is or there isn't when it comes to that. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a big, it's the big question mark. It's, it is the big question mark of, of the world. Yeah. I mean, you, you've even seen it play out with Kanye. Cause remember he went fully Christian gospel album, no swearing, um, didn't want people in the studio having sex unless they were married. Right. Crying about the abortion and or yeah, almost yeah. abortion. Yeah, yeah. Anti-abortion, right. you know, Jesus is king, everything else like that. Sunday service. Yeah, he drank the juice. He definitely became newborn for a minute. He yes, definitely yes, drank yes, that He drank the juice. juice. Yeah. And then I remember seeing an interview and he said, well, all those prayers went unanswered. <laughs> and now you see him and he's, there's no mention of Jesus. Swearing, sex, drugs. I, it's, it's really, it's almost as if that's part of his life never existed. And at one point it was all him. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting kind of seeing people jump in and out of, you know, real hardcore religion like yeah. that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it's some, like something which I don't know how long he was into it, you know, but. For me, it wasn't an easy thing, you know, coming out of it. It was, uh, once you dedicate a certain amount of your life, you know, you get, you know, into something, certain amount of time and energy, and it's the core thing. It's very hard to just be like, oh, oops, I think I might've made a mistake. You know, <laughs> you know, you know how many hours I spent in shul? Yeah. Thousands and thousands of hours breaking my teeth over the, he over the letters and, you know, I feel I gained a lot from it. And so I don't look back on it and wish it didn't happen. It was a real hard time for me, but I think it gave me discipline. It gave me a lot of different things, uh, under, more of an understanding, you know, uh, of who I am, where I come from. Prayer, which is always important to me. I became good at that. I, I became uh, something that I know how to do and understand and, and, and uh, connect to something. I mean, there is a lot of, I think I took from it, so I don't kill myself. But I think a lot of people, that's a big reason why they don't change their minds about things is because, you know, they don't want to go back on their own ego, you know, or uh, they can, you know, think that they may have made a mistake and wasted time. Yeah, and no, I feel you, man. I feel you. Well, Marisi Ahu, man, I appreciate you coming in. Yeah. Uh, I think a, a conversation like this is needed at a time like this when you have two people who come from similar backgrounds but don't necessarily have the same idea of religion and politics and so forth, especially at a time right now where you're potentially looking at a war between Iran and Israel. And yeah. that may be that big thing that changes Everything. the future. We don't know because like we said earlier, Iran has been the one that's been financing a lot of these conflicts. No, we got they're 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 out of the closet now. We got like we got them to show their true face. Yeah, you know, and um, now it's go. It's going to be on. Like it's it's not going to be pretty. 
but hopefully it will be the shift of something not just for yeah. Jews, for everybody from that region. I agree, and I hope so, because I've been to Israel, but I've also been to Palestine. Uh, part of the whole birthright was us going into Palestine to have dinner with a Muslim family in Palestine and actually talking about our, our similarities as well as our differences. And uh, I have many, many Muslim friends. You know, uh, my man Napoleon from the Outlaws. Uh, me and Akon have always been cool. Like, literally, literally, you know, uh, uh, Trey D. Like, like the, the list goes on and on and on and on. And I've always respected them to the fullest. And they've always respected me as well. And I feel that a lot of times these types of conflicts make people choose sides when there's really no side to choose. It's really, you have to deal with individuals and see how they are. And uh, listen, I appreciate you coming in. I wish Absolutely. you all the best. Congratulations on really kind of breaking this this barrier of, you know, a, a sitting Jewish kid doing reggae at the highest level and really finding absolute success in it. It just shows that really when it comes to music, it has nothing to do with how the person looks or where the person is from. If you're dope, you're dope and people accept it. And we've seen it, you know. And it wasn't just one big song. It was multiple big songs over a span of time and big, big audiences and performing worldwide, opening up for Sting and, you know, the, these, these mega stars and so forth. Congratulations on, on really shifting things. Um, and I wish you all the best. Thank you, man. I got to get you to a show, the Beacon Theater in November. I would love to. Friends, so. I would love to, man. Let yeah. me know when it's on. All right, cool. That's what it is. Till next time. All right, Vlad. Peace. Peace.